Hey guys, Ranchin here, bringing you all our stock of commentary. This is going to be the losers match in Group E of the Round of 32 of the, well, whatever, MSL 2010. A uh, quick announcement for those of you that, uh, before I get into this, for those of you that, if you do not still know, uh, I cast the entire, and I mean the entire Winners League playoff finals uh, with the nuke on Vile Attack. So go check that out. Uh, it's between KT Rolster and NBC Game Hero. Very good games. Exciting overall. Pretty awesome. I recommend you guys go there, check it out. Really enjoyed doing it. So uh, please go and uh, leave a comment and uh, tell the haters to screw themselves, please. <laughs> yeah, just please go ahead and enjoy yourselves. Um, and if at all possible, so of course, leave Nuka a comment. Positive comments are what keep us going, yes. So, yeah, there's that. Anyway, we're on to the game. This is going to be between MVP and Stork. Stork in a uh, not the best positions at the moment, I guess. Uh... Being in the losers match, one loss away. This is his best matchup uh, against Terrence, so this is definitely something he should be able to do. But I don't know. I don't know. Stork's the kind of guy that breaks my heart, man. He breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. So uh, just yeah, we're gonna see what happens here. I don't really know what to expect. Stork should be able to win this, but at the same time, breaks my heart, man, all the time, man. Bork just isn't what it used to be. It's kind of sad, really. Kind of, kind of sad, really. So it's going to be on match point yet again. Uh, we're going to have the upper right hand corner, the uh, the one o'clock. We're going to have the blue Terran MVP. That means at the bottom left hand position, we're going to have Stork in red as the Protoss player. A lot of viable things for Protoss on this map. I feel slightly, slightly more Protoss favored. Uh, because it's just, I feel like they have a lot of viable options to them, a lot of things that they could do. Drops are effective, arbiters are effective, carriers are effective. We feel just a lot of the way the map works just makes aerial units very effective, and Protoss have a lot of aerial units to take advantage of. So uh, I'm not quite sure if scouts are effective. I <laughs> Cal decided to go for a scout. He only won only one. If he'd gone mass scouts, might have would have worked. But he won only one scout, and that really did not, did really did not end up helping him. But you never know. You never know. What do you do? I don't know. What do you do? Can you see what happens? I don't know. But yeah, MVP surprised me against Best. Put up a really good fight, and. Uh, Really, he saw the carriers coming. He expected the carriers. He got himself ready for the carriers. Unfortunately, he just was a little bit too aggressive. Not enough defensive. Didn't fight back the carriers at the right time and allowed the carrier number to increase way too much. Just uh, did not do enough damage. Did not. He fought a good, completely destroyed best ground army, but uh, the carriers still stayed in the air. They were still around. They only lost interceptors, which they managed to rebuild. Not enough. So let's do some sinking. Thirty-five. 36, 37. Sometimes I often do, uh, sometimes, well, more like I often forget to do that, so. Ends up biting me. So we're gonna go for, okay, I thought, I thought he was gonna go for a quick expo. I did not see a gateway coming in from him or anything of the sort, so I think he might be going for a 12 next. Yep, 12 next is coming in from him here. I think that, I think that is, is a 12 nexus anyway. Um, but yeah, he's gonna try to get the uh, economic advantage. He's <laughs> going exactly the same way Best did, and, you know, hey, Best won, Mike can win. So, uh, it's. It's not bad thinking, really, when you think about it. And the upside, just barracks almost stopped. You're going to see the factory coming down alongside pretty quickly for MVP. And I really liked his build last time around. He went for, uh, tried to go for that, uh, those observer sniping. But he really had a lot of units out really quickly. Only problem was that he was on two bases for a very long time. It means he was pumping very heavily from nothing but two mining bases, like fully saturated. So he might, they were mining out pretty quickly. We're going to see what he goes for. We do see the factory up. Only one SCV mining this time around, the gas. Last time he had more SCVs. I think two mining last time around, if not full three. So he's going to just go one factory into expansion. Try to keep up economically with Stork. Going to go in there inside. Spot that initial initial gateway coming up. Some minutes core underway. There is, uh, Stork, of course, is going to be a little bit behind tech-wise, unit-wise, for a little while. But not for too long, especially uh, not for too long. I feel he's going to be able to get his economy fairly so Yes, yeah, if you go in there, he's going to spot the expansion coming up. Three probes coming up the line to start mining, and second gateway down there as well. Oh, let's see, Stork. Not sure whether he might go initial Zalot or he just might 
uh, pop a couple of Dragoons right, right away. We're going to see what he decides to go for. I think Dragoons is... Okay, it does go one Zealot, at the very least. Uh, I think that might actually go out there to cap. But I think going for Heavy Dragoons is a pretty, pretty good idea because your return opponent is going to come in and push maybe with some Marines and tanks. And you want to be able to snipe the tank. So going for a couple of... A uh, couple, a few goons with range. Go in range here. Now this might be an absolute fake out my, by him. This might be a total fake out by Stork. Very possible. Ooh, Vulture, they're picking off the uh, probe before it gets into Scal. It's very, very fortunate for Stork here. But it did see the natural expo, so we, it shouldn't be too, sp too surprised. It should know what's coming. in. This could be a definite fake here by Stork in that he's building. He's not building actual goon range, but something cheaper going for a. Like, well, plus one attack. And MVP, wow, he's just going to plop down a barracks. Uh, not quite sure whether that completely blocks off all movement. But uh, it's going to make the natural expansion the very least hard to defend. Goons are definitely going to be able to get through that. So at the very least, that's going to be annoying. One Zealot for now fighting back the Vulture. Probe and a Goon come up the bell line. Oh, beautiful strategy for him. This is going to force yeah, force him to empty the natural expo for now until the barracks goes down. So MVP just starting to be annoying, trying to delay, start getting that economic advantage from the early expansion. The proud Zealot going to fight back. And, uh, well, at the very least, the barracks went down pretty quickly. But still, there's a good battle. One Zealot coming out there. Whoa. He's gonna, oh, almost managed to pick off two Marines, but almost managed to get one. Struck thinking of pressuring with two goons. I think he's actually pushing back. I'm not quite sure. Has has a, that one Zealot alongside. So he might still do it. And he's very mining very little gas, so he might be going... Thinking of going some uh, vulture heavy strategy, and I think Stork actually no did not go for a fake edge. Just going for range, adding into robotic facilities. So we are we are going to be seeing we are going to be seeing an observatory coming down very soon. While well, we saw MVP also putting down a barracks behind his minerals at the three o'clock. Not quite sure whether that's actually just uh, you know hey I'm just I'm just going to mine behind the base <laughs> just to feel a bit safer to hide it out a little bit, or uh, whether he's going to eventually float it off. Um, not all get a jury. It's, it's still. I mean, only base, so you don't ha have any gas for what you want to mine. So you can theoretically still mine it from behind. Um, not sure if it mines as fast from behind, but it's a little bit safer. You're going to hide it for longer. So you basically you take the cons and pros, put them together, and decide which one is more important to you. Vulture going to get... Oh, Vulture going to get through. Only one single dragoon to prevent him. He's going to go inside the main, going to get the scout, possibly pick up a probe or two. Third gate, we're going to come up. Yes, Vulture could do a lot of trouble. Easy guys going to... Oh, okay, going around, spotting everything here. And yeah, just going to go for those probes, force them into a little group. Two probes going to come out, <laughs> going to be killed to start off with. Oh, only thinking on only two. The goons came back in time to defend them. But still, Stork kind of on the back foot to start things off. Has Observatory going up, but not in the rest of the positions. And MP going for his third army, for his third base. So I thought he was going for Vulture Heavy Strategy, which he is. But the reason he wasn't mining gas was usually just going to get his third expansion up as quickly as possible. Going for Academy. So we're going to see the... Okay, how's Academy going? I don't see any comms stations up, though. Um, don't know, wondering whether MVP is thinking of doing something funky, whether he's thinking of changing up, going for some racks builds. Um, well, meanwhile, we'll see Stork putting down pylons all over inside of his base, so he's expecting drops. Still hasn't had, hasn't had a scout inside of that base. Engineer be also on the way. S and some mines, some tanks, so I don't expect any sort of crazy marine action, but I do expect the Comsa stations to come up eventually. Uh, four, fourth gate, we on the way, so 